All right, time for a little show and tell with the Ecorge. And now we're going to point out the uh, relevant muscles and anatomy uh, for drawing for the upper arm and also for the lower arm, but not the hand. The hand uh, is not great on this particular Ecorge, so we won't be using the hand for that. So let's point out some of the relevant anatomy that you've been working hard on studying and take a look at it on a semi-live model, I suppose, or the Ecorge. Okay, let's take a look in here. So we know that now from starting from the top of the upper arm, we'll have about the deltoid almost to the distal, let's say, okay? Uh, so the deltoid is in through here, that large shoulder muscle, three major heads, even though there's more striations, the deltoid sits in through here now uh, on the lateral third of the clavicle over to the acromion process around right acromion spine of the scapula almost all of it and then down in through there and then begins to come down lower itself in through here it's very squared off in this particular session section and then attaches to the deltoid tuberosity on the humerus on the outside the lateral uh, part of the humerus, that little bump that we've seen on the bone about halfway between the uh, olecranon and the ball of the humerus. Now, remember that's the top layer of muscle in this upper arm system. The, the middle layer is the pectorals. We've talked about the pectorals in the chest, but they can seem pretty seamless except for this nice little triangular depression in through here that many people have where the deltoid comes in, boxes down a little bit. Of course, you have the pectoralis minor up there attaching to the corco process coming down to three and five and then the pectoralis major in through here attaching to the greater tubercle inside um, the deltoid uh, uh, tuberosity. So just remember the deltoid will cover over just a little bit of the pectoral. Now underneath now, we have a series of muscles. We have the brachialis, that deeper muscle in through here. Then, of course, we have the biceps brachial, uh, brachii in through here. Remember, it attaches all the way up to the coraco process and then all the way through the intertubular sulcus in that little groove we've seen on the humerus and up to the top of the glenoid uh, cavity through there and then down on the brachialis on the ulna side and then on the uh, radial side into the radial uh, tuberosity. So brachialis, biceps, brachia. Now, if you can see, hopefully uh, you can see on this Ecorge right in through, let me make sure I have it, the coracobrachialis right where I'm pointing that little muscle in through there. That's where you'd see that little point where we raise our arm raise our arm up and through here and we see that with Christ on the cross images drawings and paintings right through that section so the coracobrachialis in through here I took the arm off here so you could actually see it underneath here now as we go on the back we talked a little bit about the the fossa here of the scapula in through here we've talked about the the um, supraspinatus in here you really don't see it on the model the infraspinatus, you might see it a little in the window between the trapezius, the deltoid here, and then the latissimus dorsi. What I'm talking about is this little min window. Then, of course, the, the teres major, right, that goes underneath the round and attaches on the front side of the humerus and in the minor on top there that attaches here on the side, right, that does that little twisting, gives you that twist on turn of the of the humerus that, that we need. So it kind of slides and fits up in between the, um, the material. Just remember that the, the teres minor uh, overlaps the, the triceps and also the humerus on the outside and then the major comes up underneath like the latissimus dorsi here up underneath together and attaches more on the side front and through there. Now we have the triceps muscle. We can see it pretty clearly here, don't we? So we have the double-headed triceps. We have the long head or the medial here attaching all the way up to the side, the um, uh, uh, side part of the scapula in through here and then the uh, 
uh, long uh, lateral head, excuse me, long head medial, lateral head through here attaching all the way up to the base of the humerus just below the ball in through here and that that long head and then the even longer tendon down with this tendinous process really tight and attaching onto the olecranon, the elbow through here right, the lateral and medial part of the epicondyles in through here and then of course attaching into a little bit of the ulna bone right in through there. So that really takes care of the upper arm that we've seen. Okay, now we're going into the lower arm somewhat. Well, what can we can see here? And so we have the brachial radialis and through here attaching up in between the brachialis area onto the humerus and then the extensor radialis, right? Carpi radialis longus in through this particular area. So the brachial radialis, okay, right here, and then the extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis in through here. Now the flexors are a little tough to see inside and in through here. We can open them up a little bit. Just know that we have the palmaris, which we know that fans out to the palm area, right? And we have the uh, flexor radialis, carpi radialis, the flexor carpi ulna as well. And then remember these two pollicis pairs, right? In through here, attaching one slightly to the ulna, the uh, abductor pollicis longus, and then attaching into the, uh, between the ulna and the radius and the interosseous material, the extensor pollicis brevis and coming down to the thumb. Now the extensors we can see a little bit clearer in through here. Of course we know the enconius right in through this area, the triangular area uh, of the uh, arm, that little triangular muscle in through here. We have now the extensor carpi, all, uh, excuse me, radialis, uh, the brevis in through the longus we talked about. Then we have the extensor digitorum in through here and that's the long that long bulky muscle in through here that will get those long tendons down into the knuckles of the, the metacarpals and on through then we have the extensor uh, carpi uh, ulnaris coming in through here and then we return to the flexors on uh, the other side as well so again you get that divot in between there with the flexor carpi uh, ulnaris coming on the inside in through uh, here as well. So there you go. There's your there's a breakdown on the ecorge of the upper arm muscles, right? The deltoid and a little bit more action in through here. Okay, we see that stretching and attaching that posterior part of the deltoid in through here. Trapezius we see underneath in through here as well. Deltoid, deltoid right deltoid here and then the ending of the deltoid in the beginning of the pectoral which comes underneath to the greater tubercle and of course that corico process that's just sneaking in maybe a little bit underneath the uh, the arm there so there you go those are your upper arm and lower arm uh, muscles you know the, the scapulae the scapula they come into play too as well with uh, especially the teres major and minor, which we see more of the major, not so much of the minor, unless you're really, really developed. So they just have that, have that area in, in there. It's good to know uh, for uh, knowledge as well. All right, so there you go. Those are the upper and lower arm muscles. There's a lot, they're complicated, right? And they can cause some confusion with drawing. Just take it slow, slow it down do a lot of diagramming until you, until you get it and then start drawing from the ecorge or the model or active diagramming and then eventually it will, it will begin to sink in. All right, so there you go. Okay, I'll see you next time with another, um, another lesson. You guys take care. Bye-bye.